Good morning. Thank you for joining us for worship here at Grace Lutheran Church in Providence Valley Lutheran Church. We're thankful our morning's worship service is sponsored in honor of Ken and Carol Earp's 50th wedding anniversary. So a shout out to that great couple. They uh, renewed their vows yesterday here at Grace Lutheran Church. And so we're excited for them and, uh, and their family as they were able to gather together and celebrate. And now we celebrate with them for 50 years of wedded bliss. So congratulations and thank you for uh, sponsoring our radio and our online worship broadcast this morning. Also, uh, flowers on the altar this morning are in memory of Roger Ellison, so we continue to lift up our prayers uh, and commend him to God's eternal keeping. Uh, Roger's funeral was held in town here on Thursday of this past week, so we remember Roger's family as they continue to grieve his loss. Um, if you're looking for a smaller group to gather together for holy worship and uh, communion, Tuesday at 2 o'clock, we invite you to come uh, to our basement uh, here at Grace Lutheran for a, a small uh, gathering. I will share the sacrament in a, in a short meditation and scripture and song together. So that's at 2 o'clock on Tuesday of this week. Thanks again for joining us for our worship this morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us all, and all of creation. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble. Cast away our transgressions and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please pray with me. God of love, giver of life, you know the frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from these things that harm us, and guide us in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Now if the family of Cohen will join me, family and sponsors will join me at the font, please. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God. Do you desire to have Cohen Thomas Knudsen baptized into Christ? As you bring Cohen to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people. Bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place into his hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God Proclaim Christ through word and deed. Care for others and the world God made, <laughs> the world that God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help him grow in the Christian faith and life? We do, sorry. 
<laughs> That's fine. Um, sponsors, do you promise to nurture Cohen in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and help him to live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion with and in communion with the church? If so, say we do. People of God, do you promise to support Cohen and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, say we do. I want to note that we have moved the usual, we'll recite the Apostles' Creed together. We've moved it from this part of the service so we can all say it together. Um, but for now, I ask our family um, three questions. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. So do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, say, I renounce them. And do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, I renounce them. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise, yes. Um, as I say these next words, would y'all like to pour the water into the font? Whomever. Mom, you can take turns. Mom wants to do some. Um, we give thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the water, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through your word, you created the, through the water of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to new life in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given the honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So I'm going to move over here. And then if you'll just hold his head over, we will do this. Cohen Thomas, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Ooh, right in the eyes, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good job, buddy. You belong in Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Alleluia. And all God's people say, Hallelujah. We promise to give Keith and Andrea our support as they live with their child in the pathway of Christ. We offer ourselves also as ones who take Cohen Thomas into our love and our prayers and our daily life, striving to build a community rich in the spirit of God in which we to nurture him. We welcome you into the Lord's family, Cohen Thomas. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, of the same Heavenly Father, and worker with us in the kingdom of God. Amen. Will you light the candle, please? Thank you. Cohen, we light this candle as a reminder to that you are the light of the world, and a city on a hill cannot be hidden. So let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Amen. And so today we welcome Cohen Thomas into our family. We give him a warm welcome. Thank you. This is for y'all.
The first um, reading is from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9. To you, O Lord, I lift, my, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust to do, or do not let me be put to shame. Do not let me, my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you, for you are the Lord, are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be, be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions according to your steadfast love. Remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. God and upright, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, be in, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in, in what is right and teaches the humble his way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from Philippians 2, 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, my sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, giving the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regain others, regard others as their as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for, it, for his good pleasure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the book of Matthew, chapter 21. When he entered in the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say, why then did you not believe John? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So the chief priest answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. 
The son answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same, and the second son answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. And Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I wanted you to hear Matthew's... You may be seated. (laughs) I wanted you to hear Matthew's Gospel today because it is the first of three connected readings over the next few weeks. But this text will not be my main focus this week, not when we are also given what is known as the Christ hymn, beautiful poetry in Philippians to consider. Do not forget this parable of the two sons, however, because I will be referring back to the story in coming weeks. A week like this one leaves me wanting to preach a sermon that says, Jesus, am I right? But beloved, we can surely use a few more words today. And the Apostle Paul gives us some beautiful ones to work with. Paul was in prison at the time he wrote this letter to Philippi, arrested for sharing the good news of Jesus. Thankfully, we have freedom of religion in this country, so I do not have to be concerned with arrest for telling you about God's Son. What privilege. Do you have a Bible, maybe on your phone? If so, go with me to Philippians. It's one of the tiny books between Corinthians and Thessalonians in the back half of the book. I know my confirmation students have a Bible, I just gave them one. Last week, we heard the beginning of Paul's letter where he gives thanks for the holy people at Philippi and says how he prays for joy for their faithfulness, both when he was with them in person, but even more now that he's kept away in chains. Paul implores them to keep the faith, whether he lives and returns or dies before making it back to them. That's called integrity, don't you know? When you do the right thing, even when nobody's watching. Paul compliments the people on their integrity, and then, Look at chapter 1, verses 27 through 30. Paul implores the people of Philippi that, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come to see you or, you only, or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Strive together as one for the faith of the gospel, for this is a sign to those who oppose you that they will be destroyed, but you will be saved by God. Paul continues with the theme of oneness or unity in today's reading, and I will share that again momentarily. Now, as I sat down to work out this message for you, beloveds, it was with a heavy heart. Like this community, I've lost someone dear to me this week, and it's important to acknowledge that grief. Where does it sit in the body? How does it affect interactions with others? It's also important to find moments to relax. So please, I know that this is different, but let's pause. I'm going to read chapter two again in a moment. And as I do, I invite you into an exercise of relaxation. So please adjust how you're sitting 
so that you're comfortable. Close your eyes. Relax the muscles in your face, your neck. Shake out your arms, your hands, relax. Focus on your back and feel a wave of release as you relax all those muscles. Release the tension in your hips, all the way down your legs, into your feet, all the way down to your toes. Release your tongue from the top of your mouth and let it hang loose. And now take a few deep cleansing breaths with me. In, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Again, in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Continue to relax in this way and breathe at your own pace as I read again the Apostle Paul's pleading words to the faithful in Philippi. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourself. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Here ends the reading. And let us slowly come back to each other together. Open our eyes. Paul begins by seeking a shred of goodness from God for these people to hold on to. He knows that the world they live in is rough, and the right and just choice is not always the easy one to stand up for. And yet, Paul pleads for these believers to hold tight to any good thing they can, encouragement, consolation, sympathy, love. And as they are grounding themselves in the goodness that can only come from Christ, he calls for them to reject advancing the self and exist as one. Do you hear that repetition of a call to be united in those first verses? Listen. He says, be of the same mind, having the same love, 
being in full accord and of one mind. Four different ways there. Why is it important for a group of people who are working for a common goal, in this case, to build the budding church, to be on the same page? Well, what happens on the football field if every player in the field tries to run a different play? Chaos, right? There's no advancing the ball towards the goal line. No, the quarterback gets sacked, probably some yardage is lost, and there may even be a flag on the play. It is imperative that all the players are moving as a unit to complete agreed an agreed-upon action. Paul is coaching the Philippian team in these lines and telling them the play. If they do not unite and work together, all of their hard work to get to this point in the game will not amount to much. So they have to listen to their coach, study the plays, practice, 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 and then show up as a team to win against the opposition. It's like Paul's chanting from his jail cell, a people united can never be divided. He knows they can do this, and he tells them so. As God's faithful people stand united against their opposition, Paul throws out another instruction. He says, let be of the same mind, or let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Um, okay, Paul, what do you mean by that? Here is where that which is called the Christ hymn begins and where the apostle uses this incredible poetry to describe exactly what he means by that. As part of the Trinity, Jesus is God, right? We've learned this. Okay, so Jesus, God, decides not just to float to earth on a cloud of light and exist in all the glory of God, no, our Lord Jesus decides not to exploit or benefit from his equality with God, but humbles himself and takes human form. What kind of God does that? I know the Greek gods were ruined, rumored to come and dwell among mortals, but in those stories, they took full advantage of their in immortality. Not Jesus. Not only does he choose to be human, but begins life as a fully dependent infant, born in the middle of the Roman Empire to young working class parents whose marriage begins in scandal because they were only promised to one another when his mother became pregnant, and that was a big deal back then. God chooses this humble beginning and then continues to choose a fully human life even until he breathes his last. In this human form, Jesus is fully obedient to God to the point of death. And not just any death, but an excruciating, humiliating death hanging publicly on a Roman cross. Because of this great obedience, though, God exalts Jesus higher than any other so that every being in heaven and on earth regards Jesus as Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the original Greek, the phrase translated every knee should bow could also be understood as laying weapons down, like your bow and arrow. Um, so that expands the meaning a bit, but that's fun ner trivia we nerd about in seminary. Um, back to Jesus and Paul. Because at this point in the narrative comes a transition, the word therefore. Now that Paul has described this incredible humility and obedience of Jesus, he says, therefore, my beloved. Isn't that a beautiful thing to be called beloved? Mm. Paul concluded, therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He tells these folks to use that integrity he has just affirmed in them and get to work. But, bonus, they don't have to do the work alone. God is working with them. 
These are baptized children of God who have received the gift of faith and in whom God's spirit resides. Which, now that I think about it, sounds a lot like me. Sounds a lot like Cohen. A lot like you. Yes, my beloved, Paul's words are still meaningful to our life, our time, our context. We too are to be praised for having integrity in our lives of faith. We too are called to stand united in our mission to meet God where God is at work in the world. We too are expected to be humble and obedient to God. But we too have God's presence that was breathed into us and poured over us at our baptism as we were sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Please take your hand and mark the cross of, the cry of Christ on your forehead now. And as you go into the world, remember God's promise to be with us always and our promise to be an active member of the body of Christ or as I like to call it team Jesus amen there are baskets placed in the entryway for you to share as you depart um, and we'll continue with our offertory prayer Please pray with me. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation, through Christ Jesus. Amen. Turning our hearts and spirits to the one true and faithful God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Let us pray for the world, our community, and the whole church of God. God of righteousness, we give thanks for the gift of faith we receive in Christ through the waters of baptism. We pray for all the baptized who are made righteous through Christ's death and resurrection. We pray especially for the faith of our newest siblings baptized this weekend, that they may be supported by this community as they grow and learn about you. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful one, in the garden you clothed Adam and Eve. You kept your promises to Abraham and Sarah, delivered the Israelites from the abuses of Pharaoh, and sent your Son to dwell among us and deliver us from the powers of sin and death. You are faithful to your promises of life. Give us the faith to trust your authority and leadership in our lives, our families, relationships, workplaces, and communities. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful and tender God, in the wilderness, it is easy for us to lose sight of who we are and to whom we belong. We can become frantic and confused, prideful and self-serving, lost in grief and overwhelmed. Yet, you who are faithful find us in these desert places and make claim upon us. Even in the midst of our wilderness, we hear you call us back to you and name us as beloved. Lord, in your mercy. Reconciling spirit, for divisions in this world among class, race, gender, ableism, religion, sexuality, nationality, in families and communities, we pray for healing and reconciliation. Cause us to be forgiving and help us to recognize the dignity and worth of all your people. Empower us to be radical in fellowship with one another in spite of these divides. Lord, in your mercy. God of unity, send your spirit of rest upon us this day to rest upon, send your spirit of rest upon us this day to rest upon your church in every place that we might know the fullness of unity with you and your son. 
Break our hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh that we may know the fullness of unity with one another. Lord, in your mercy. God of all consolation, come to the help of your people. We are living in a time of great division and judgment and fear. Voices cry out to you from the depths of suffering and pain. Hear us, O Lord, for we long for your peace. We long for your justice. Lord, in your mercy. Healing Spirit, you promise to hear us when we pray. We lift to you all those who are sick, dying, the bereaved, those experiencing homelessness, the lonely, the imprisoned, the addicted, the unemployed, and those who seek healing through prayers of this community of faith those that we say aloud now and those we hold in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. You may stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. to one in the Holy Spirit, let us pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We sing together.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.